The so-called Great Plague of 1665, it was the last major epidemic of plague in this country. And it was very severe. All towns and villages within a 10 mile radius of the capital were affected to some degree. Official figures suggest there were about 68,000 people who died, but it was probably far more than that, around 100,000 at least, about a fifth of the population of the country. This object is a plague bell that we assume that it's 17th century and was probably used during the Great Plague. And we know from records that using a bell to warn passers-by that there was somebody coming along the road with a corpse was commonplace. So the Museum of London is very fortunate to have the collection of Walter G. Bell, who was the historian of the Great Plague and the Great Fire. And the collection also includes bills of mortality. And these are really interesting documents, particularly for the 1665 outbreak. And they're part of a continuum, really, of record keeping in London. It goes back to the middle of the 16th century. And the idea was that the parish clerks uh, recorded all causes of death within their jurisdiction. Those records were compiled both on a weekly basis and then on an annual basis. The bill is quite sort of formulaic, so you have the parish, you have the number of inhabitants in the parish, and then you have a long list of causes of death, so it might be something like toothache, which may seem surprising, but presumably the poor person got septicemia or something like that. It might be childbirth. And then, of course, in plague years, you have uh, a special category for plague. And when plague became a particularly serious problem, then you can see how, over the course of the year, the numbers build up parish by parish. So we've become um, perhaps overly familiar uh, in the last few years of looking at graphs uh, reflecting the, the spread of disease. And what's very interesting is that it follows a typical epidemic pattern that you get a sharp spike, it drops off quite suddenly, then there's, the, there's a bit of a plateau and then you get a secondary spike just when people were beginning to feel that things were returning to normal and then again petering off. document that is rather different that the museum has is a broadside, in other words a poster. It's rather like a comic strip. There are nine images. If you follow them sequentially it shows somebody um, in their room succumbing to, to plague. Um, it shows uh, bonfires in the street which were set up at regular intervals. Part of the thinking at the time was that plague was caused by noxious vapours and miasmas seeping out of the earth's crust. And so one way of guarding against contagion was to have these bonfires that helped to waft away the noxious Air. And then you see um, pictures of Londoners fleeing the city. And it's very interesting that documents tell us that, of course, people that could leave London were mostly people who could afford to do so. But very many people were forced to stay put. And for them, it was a particularly difficult and often devastating time. During the times of plague in the 17th century, it's very clear that um, many people suffered deeply. But having said that, there were also people who profited because their businesses thrived. You know, people were, were in the same storm, but not necessarily in the same boat. And, and it, that is exactly the case now. History is about people. Looking at these documents where you have these statistics, Behind that is a person and a family. And it's fascinating from a historian's point of view, but we should never lose sight of the fact that these, these are people.